Welcome back to Persona 5 Royal. I was about to head to the Vel Room, but I just realized last time I did not do the conversation for talking to the team at this safe room. So let's see how's our progress. Yeah, I actually think we're a little bit further along than Morgana says we are here. Are I'd say we're maybe at least a third of the way in. Shall we go? But with that, I promised last time I'd head back to the Velvet Room to fuse some stuff, so that's what we're gonna do, although I, I'm not sure exactly how much I'll be able to make here. Do you need something? I need some fusions, thank you. I just noticed those very brutal looking spikes over there near the barrels. Almost looks like modern day tank traps. You wouldn't think they'd need the, those in a medieval castle. You certainly seem composed. I thought I was going to say you certainly seem motivated, but okay. Time for some rehabilitation. You wish to perform an execution. Okay, now let's do by result. Let let's see what I can get. Oh, level six. Yeah, Genbu I actually will be needing eventually. I can get uh, Kelpie or Saki Mitama. Uh, Ketchy and Bicorn. Actually, two personas I don't need, and I do That's need lovers. So honestly, this actually seems like a good idea. Uh, also, Bufu's going to be kind of useful where we're going. Energy drop is okay. Not really keen on wind wall, but like I can only pass down one skill here. Oh, okay. Like, an attack debuff is nice, but dual elements is also nice. Especially having fire on something not weak to ice. Uh, okay. What else can I make with what I got? Bicorn and Mandrake or Arsene and Mandrake? Ah. Uh, yeah, I mean, Arsene's not really doing hot. I kind of wanted to level up Arsene until he got Secunda, but... I see. A strong okay, Kelpie indeed. is strength, though, which is an arcana that we also don't need uh, for a matching uh, confidant bonus, so... Yeah, I'm going to go for Saki Mitama right now. Select the skills you'd like to inherit. Yeah, I'm going to go for Agi. I can easily get another Bicorn. And yeah, you can press the um, the options button or start on PS3 to skip the fusion animation, thankfully. I, I love how it just, um, like, scrunches up the cutscene into a piece of paper. Also, if you try and press that button and you don't skip, it means that something's happening. But um, we'll get to that when it happens. Growth 1 uh, is actually kind of nice. Yeah, it means you get 25% experience even when not participating in battle, like it says. And uh, Rakukaja's okay. I personally prefer full party defense buffs to single. Oh, and we just got a trophy. Yeah, all of the um, the trophies in, I said this back in the intro video, but all of the trophies, they're very, very easy to get. They move most of the harder feats to something else we'll be seeing later. But, um, okay, uh, oh, Incubus and Mandrake's not bad. Because, uh, yeah, I want to, we this. can't get Slime yet, but I want to draw your attention to it. Slime is an excellent persona to have uh, once you get to the end of Kamoshida's Palace, because it resists physical and gun, which is great. Also uh, learns Taru at level 11, and it's also Chariot Arcana, so uh, it helps for Ryuji's Confidant too. I think for now I'm going to leave. Your mind. Unless Time there's like anything I can just fodder here. Not really, I already saw everything we could make. Finished for done already. What? No slacking off. But that whole exchange of done already, what? You hear that so much when you play this game. Okay then, we are all hurting a tiny bit. Maybe I could use Arn's SP to heal a little. Okay, that's put her down a little bit, but at least she's still higher than Morgana. So let's head back to East Building 3rd floor. And after nice. what we've done, uh, I'm gonna... Before saving, let's see, I've got Silky... Oh, Silky has Dormina. Dormina is kind of nice to have for what I'm about to do, but Saki Mitama might be okay as well. Actually, I just realized what I'm trying to do, not having Tarunda could also be a major problem. Oh, I do have Pulimpa on you, which could help as well. So, um, I'm not gonna beat around the bush anymore, uh, so let me just uh, explain what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be attempting to fight the Red Shadow. You're really not supposed to at this point, but it's doable, and I kind of want to show that it is. Of course, the, the, the real thing is that, you know... An enemy, and it looks strong. I just actually noticed something though. If you stay close to a shadow, you can actually hear them say dialogue. Like all the shadows in Kamoshida's palace have the same generic dialogue, but it's different for every palace, so it's kind of fun to listen to it. 
Battling Savage Enemies. Red auras, higher level, uh, yeah, that's obvious. So, you cannot negotiate with them until they're on the last, like, quarter of their health, or I think it's third, but yeah. When they're on low health, then you can negotiate with them. And also, you can just try and run, which is a little unreliable this early. Brutal Cavalryman. So I believe this thing is weak to ice, and it nulls gun, which is a huge problem in Royal, because they're a big source of early damage. So I think we're all going to get a chance to act before uh, it gets to do anything. So let's try Bufu. Yep, yeah, there we go, it is weak to this. But I could go for an all-out attack, but... Okay. But if I go for an all-out attack, it's going to get back up. So I'm not going to do that. Actually, wait, it'll get back up on its turn anyway, I'm thinking like P3 logic. But it, it'll still take more damage as long as it's down, so keeping it down is actually still a decent thing. So the question is, who do I attack with? Uh, I'm gonna try you. Go ahead. I doubt physical is gonna be much good, but I'm guess I'm gonna try. Oh, it's not resisted, so that's that's uh, decent. Morgana doesn't have status right now, so I think I'll just go for Garu. Not a resistance, good. And okay, Ryuji goes last. Oh, that's uh, actually kind of a problem. Arn hasn't even learned sleep yet. That's also a problem. I was actually kind of banky on Arn having sleep, and I totally forgot that she didn't have it yet. Uh, this, uh, uh, in that case, if it targets Joker, that could be bad. I don't have any spotlights or anything. Oh, I do actually have free spray. It's going to be staying down, though, so I won't be able to use that again. Yeah, so Garu's a little cheaper than uh, other elemental skills, and that's because... Um, it doesn't have an ailment attached to it, so bear that in mind. You can actually use uh, wind skills a little bit more cheaply than you would anything else. Uh, I'm gonna lunge at you. Okay, you're kind of low, but please don't hit Joker. Power slash. Well, somebody's probably dead. Uh, that was a crit. That's not good. That was uh, actually very, very bad. Right. Um. So I may be able. Actually, I can negotiate with it now. So all I really need to do is knock you down, so I won't really be losing any experience for negotiating. And I'm not gonna- actually, if I try this, I think I think it's gonna refuse me if I try this. So, yeah, you cannot uh, recruit a shadow that is higher level than Joker. The same rules apply um, as the ones that apply during fusion. But, he will give us sooty heavy armor as a consolation prize. So okay, we beat that thing, and all it cost us was Ryuji getting one-shotted. Well, that's uh, not good. At least I can show this though. The good news, um, the good news, if there is good news in people getting KO'd, is that they don't actually stay KO'd. They come back with one HP. Do I have any? Oh yeah, I do have that medicine from the tutorial. I'd probably rather use that than healing uh, items at this point. That soul drop, I'm gonna save that. And stamina kit, I'm also saving. I can probably afford to be on this much health right now. But yeah, now that we've done that, we can go in here. So, always a good idea to check around with third eye in a room that looks uh, seemingly um, non-suspicious, because this book is looking a little bit mm. sussy, I guess. It almost hurts me to use that slang. I don't really use that slang, but I will say that the term sus predated uh, Among Us. The Slave Book. Ah, hmm. <laughs> uh, yes. Morgana thinks a book about slaves is important. Let's Make it that what you will. Uh, but anyway, it really just shows Show just what Kamoshita thinks of the school. Now, you're probably not anything notable. Oh, you are! Okay, then. <laughs> Mad Marsh Horse. Well, thanks to the Velt Room, we've been spoiled on what this thing actually is, and if you're looking closely at this thing's weaknesses in there, you would know what it's weak to. Unfortunately, I still... I have a, a poor attention span and I forgot, so I, I think it's either... I know it's either a Lek or Wind. So I'll try one of those things. Don't really have any Wind on me right now, so I guess I'll just equip Saki Mitama. Actually, there's no real reason to equip Saki Mitama, because um, Saki um, gets experience anyway. So, uh... I'm gonna actually guard. So is it... I think it's actually a Lek, but I'm gonna try this anyway. Yeah, it was a Lek, okay. May actually die to Ryuji, though. 
Yeah, it was a lick. Apparently, um, a lot of enemies in the early game are actually weak to a lick, which makes Ryuji even better. So, hi there, you are level 6, and that means we can actually recruit you. What's that shadow so damn happy about? Guess we ought to play along. And yeah, from now on, Morgana will give you hints as to um, the personalities of enemies. I still love um, uh, the um, the beast tar speech type on shadows. So if it's upbeat, I guess we should agree with it being like this, I suppose. What? Yeah, because normally agreeing with something that sounds jokey is considered a playful answer. Well, I mean, you're a spirit that's known for drowning people. Times have changed, humans are powerful, yeah, this is probably vague. Uh... It's either of these two. I don't know which one of these is considered, like, more upbeat than the other. Maybe this? What? Okay, good. So we now have Kelpie. I was talking about it like, you know, uh, drowning people before, but um, the main reason why I know that, uh, I think I, I did know this before, but um, I wanted to tell this uh, story once we got Kelpie because I find it kind of funny. So um, this is going to sound weird, but it'll, it'll all make sense eventually. So I've never seen the new DuckTales, but I've heard that there's an episode of, Duck of the new DuckTales where um, there's a Kelpie, like I think they're playing golf somewhere and they encounter a Kelpie and like it actually does try and drown them. But the thing that I find hilarious Show about that uh, is that um, not only did they make the Kelpies in that show a parody of My Little Pony, they actually got Tara Strong and Andrea Liebman to voice them. The voices of Twilight and Pinkie Pie. Like, I just thought that was just, like, okay, I, I just, when I, when I heard they did that, I was like, okay, that's pretty great. I haven't seen that actual episode or, you know, again, any of that show. I've heard decent things about the new DuckTales, but it is kind of annoying they it got cancelled after Series 3. Like, it seemed like they were setting up for much more, especially with the whole Darkwing Duck stuff that they were setting up. Yeah, I, I end up accumulating a lot of secondhand knowledge of TV shows that I don't watch thanks to TV Tropes, so I have TV Tropes the heck out of uh, DuckTales 2017, but I've never actually watched any of it. But yeah, okay. it felt like they were trying to do something more with all of the Darkwing Duck no stuff, and then, nope, they got cancelled after three seasons for some reason. But yeah, suspicious. anyway, I just I just remember seeing that, and I thought that was just kind of a funny use of Kelpie's. The Beefcake Book. Um, have Nice Guy and Tough Guy been infiltrating this mental world? Huh. Weird book on bodybuilding techniques. Yeah, I believe, like, um, when Kanji gets called the blood-curdling beefcake emperor in, uh, do, Arena, uh, I don't think he- I forget what his reaction is exactly, I haven't played the story mode of the original Arena in a while, but I- I do remember that Naoto has a pretty funny reaction to- to her title being the, um, it's like the 200 IQ killjoy detective. Every other part of that was fine, but the moment that, they, that he says killjoy, she's like, okay, right. I got this. <laughs> They must pay. Oh, you're weak to a lek as well as um as well as fire. So I never used a lek on this thing before, and yet I knew that it was weak to that. So how is that? So I can finally I've been trying to find a good time to talk about this until now, but um I can, I've said a few times that um uh does Joker seriously not have any wind? Guess not. I'm gonna have to machine gun the rest. I said there's a reason why I like, um, also, uh, yes, Morgana, more of that. Um, the reason why I, I said that there's another reason why I like recruiting everything. And that's because, even though discovering weaknesses is normally trial and error in this game, when you recruit a shadow and get it as persona, or when you fuse that persona in the Velvet Room, you will actually have, like, a full view of all of its elemental affinities. So, in a sense, recruiting enemies kind of takes the place of scanning in this game. So it serves a double function. So even if you- oh, that thing's gonna- <laughs> didn't see me because I happen to just be barely hiding around the corner of that table. But yeah, there are two reasons to recruit enemies, both to get more personas and more fusion fodder, but also-
Uh, I think you guys are, uh, oh, it's weak to fire, okay. Well, that's good, because I can, uh, actually get armed to do that. We're running a little low on SP, though, at this point. Uh, but yeah, it also gives you the enemies basically their scan. They don't always have the same moves as a Shadow as they do as a Persona, but often they have some of the same moves. Yeah, I just want to get more experience here. We kind of want to be level 9 to 11 by the end of this palace, so I need to catch up in levels a little bit. And also, we need to get to level 9 for another reason. So remember how Bereth was level 9? Uh, we're not supposed to know what's called Bereth. Um, okay. uh, Brutal Cavalryman was level 9. They were too weak to bother with. So... Focus. I actually need to get that that thing as a persona before we leave, because it's Hierophant Arcana, and Hierophant is actually an important one. How suspicious. We need Hierophant before we leave this place. So now we have uh... the Queen Book, the Slave Book, and the Beefcake Book. One of these things is not like the others. I'm so there should be one more. Uh-oh, there's another one of those, um, thingies there. Said there should be one more. Okay, so that, that way there, down the stairs, that's a locked door, oh, so yes. let's, um... I'm gonna try and avoid Joker, this one. Just because... <sighs> we can stand here as much as we want because it's a cutscene and that thing won't see us, but, uh... Yeah, I'm not gonna fight that thing twice. A lot of the time, like, if you do know your way around the party members and how they work, the red shadows are beatable when you first encounter them, but it is kind of tricky. Well, then. And suddenly we have investigation music. See, so, yeah, if we press this button, we can see everything in here, but also we can see that there's another book here. How suspicious. The King Book. Hmm. It's a book that can only move one space per turn, and um, if the book gets, um, I guess, fully read, then you instantly lose. Is this... Shiho's name. All about female students. Ugh, yeah. I remember, um, like, the actual, like, like uh, voice actors livestream part of this in the lead-up to the promotion to this game coming out in English, and, uh, yeah... Uh, I believe Erica Harlika was actually, like, here, uh, along with, like, Atlas stuff at this point, so, Joker. yeah, everyone was talking about how, um, I think that's actually where the, um, hey. people started referring to Kamoshida as Bad Touch Sensei. So, yeah, this is just a generally an association puzzle, so which of these do you think would fit, considering this part's all about female students? The Queen book would be what goes here. Nothing's changing just yet. Uh... History of Kamoshida. Kamoshida's heroisms, Kamoshida's lore. What, are they talking about Persona Q2 here? So in this case, uh... Part of me wants to insert this and see what happens. I, I can't resist, I want to see what happens. Oh? Okay, yes, yeah, so this one doesn't fit. What do you want to do? Yep. But I guess this shows that you can put books in, um, hmm. that don't I fit. See. And the reason why I wanted to mention that is because there was actually a soft lock in this puzzle before it got patched. Apparently, uh, if you put all of the wrong books, I think, on the shelves, and then left the dungeon without solving this puzzle, then oh. when you came back, this whole puzzle just wouldn't work, and your game would be softlocked. They did actually patch this out. So, boys from the school. The Volga 8. Are you sure this is a Kamoshida book, and you didn't write that one? But in this case, yeah, the only book we have left is the Slave Book. And speaking of disturbing things, that opens up what may be the worst part of this dungeon. Ugh, the hell is this room? There are tons of pictures of Suzui in here. Wait. 
it's all pics of her? <sighs> yeah, definitely. I feel even more motivated to do this now. I'm sure it'll feel awful, but we should search this room. There has to be something in here if he was hiding it with such an elaborate trick. Yeah, this is just... I can see it. I don't have any words for this. I mean, it'd be, it'd be bad enough if it was, you know, just one of the students, but the fact that it's someone he sexually assaulted and... Is this... a medal? He's got a whole room in his mind that's just this. Well, it has to be important. He went through all the trouble to hide it here, after all. I guess we'll take it then. And unfortunately, we have to go into this room to progress. Wait, there's something under the metal too. Oh, it's a different map from the one we have. This is lucky. Let's take it with us. Aha! Our map's complete now! So is it gonna tell us where the treasure is? Yeah, look. It has to be here. That's a weird-shaped building. Could it be a tower or something? Considering our current position, I'd say we're about halfway there. All right, let's hurry over there. No. Now that we know how much we have left, we can calculate the best way to pace ourselves. Except if you're following a Max Confidant guide and you have to go all the way. Let's keep exploring, but take breaks when you need to, Joker. Yeah, the thing that I find interesting about this room is that um, there's a common comedy trope where somebody has what's um, often known as a, a stalker shrine. This is one of the few cases where I've seen this trope used for horror rather than comedy. Of course, this being a foreshadow encounter, it means that it's going to be another tutorial. So what could it be a tutorial on? mumbling to itself, but it's not making any moves. Be careful. If my prediction is correct, that one's a bit problematic for us. Alright, and I'll go take care of it. Just be careful. Come on. What the hell? I mean, at least it's a scripted dodge there, so you're not, you know, fully screwed over if Ruji had low HP before the tutorial. It started moving after we attacked it. Looks like it's exactly what I expected. So, I mean, now's not really the time to be mentioned this, but I mean, I guess you'd call these Iron Giant Shadows? Once we take it down... Hey, you two, watch this! What the... it exploded? I'll explain later. Focus on the battle for now. These things are a new mechanic in Royal, and I don't know, like, they're kind of fun sometimes, but in my opinion, this is one of the most unnecessary Royal editions. I don't think it really adds a whole lot to the battle system, and it's just kind of weird how it works, but, uh, like, they can be kind of fun. So yeah, they don't normally attack, but if you do attack them, they will counter you. They will not attack unless you act first. But also, they always drop an item, and then will also explode, damaging the surrounding shadow. So, in these fights, uh, the general strategy is less to knock down everything, and more just to get knockdowns so that you can do a big baton pass, then one-shot the disaster shadow, and then have that, because the more damage, like this thing says here, the more damage they take to their killing blow, the more damage they deal with their explosion. And you can see some pretty big, big numbers if you uh, do a lot of damage. Uh, also, uh, what's Despair? Despair's an ailment, but we're not going to see that for a while. So yeah, the rest of these things, uh, you can just get shot. There's another one like from earlier. Haphazard attacks on it will only make things tougher for us. It's probably best to take it down fast by striking its weakness and getting it to blow up. Alternately, we could put it to sleep, or make it unable to move, then just deal with it later. Ailments are always a good way of dealing with enemies that you just want to put off until later. 
So yeah, we've got Bicorn here, that's an exploding type shadow. Do I have any uh, electrical attacks on this current team? I, not team, but like, I guess you could call Joker's Persona's a team. That's not right. So who's next? Uh, I don't even know if Beauty's gonna be able to go before them. So in this case, I think I could actually try to dominate it. Of course, if this doesn't put it to sleep, then it's going to counterattack, but okay, it's asleep. And as you can see there, we have a technical indicator. We haven't got the tutorial on technical attacks officially yet, but technical is very, very important in Royal. Okay, Ryuji is going now. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to see... Okay, I'll hit it once. And now, before it can actually get up and start doing anything, I'm going to baton pass to... I suppose I can bat Yeah, I'll baton pass to Morgana, who hasn't used his gun yet. And now with the baton pass... Okay, that wasn't a very good explosion. I probably should have used a better attack, and you're going next, so that means you have to die. Oh, that's bad. Don't hit him again, please. Thank you for being dumb. Yeah, the AI on the enemy sometimes takes mercy on you. We got two beads out of that, which are full heals. It's a step. Forward. And now we can make Genbu. That's good. So when Aunt says this is amazing there, I feel like that, like in English, doesn't really uh, sort of fit the mood of that. And it makes me wonder whether in Japanese she said sugoi there, because sugoi, sugoi is an interesting word. It can, mean, it can mean amazing, but it can also mean horrible. So like, if she was saying sugoi there, then maybe, maybe it would have made a bit more sense in Japanese. Okay, somebody... I'm running a little low on SP right now, which isn't good. I do have those beads. I may want to leave them for an emergency situation. It's somewhere. Because I believe that's... Oh. Yeah, they're talking about this. Um, hmm. There actually is a use for this. And in fact, if you were looking closely earlier in this video, you might have actually noticed something. Uh-oh. Yes, oh, it's seen me. Okay, um, I need to run. Yeah, so um, this is actually something that's, that I can kind of show now. Um, when you, I'm going the wrong way, and this might be a, it's a dead end. Crap. At least I didn't get ambushed. I wanted to go for the safe room, but I accidentally hit the stairs instead, so let's try and run. Oh, don't go twice before I can run. Okay, well, just in case something bad happens gonna keep you healed. Also, now we can see what happens when Morgana goes down despite him being a navigator. It can get a little annoying because Morgana's a very squishy party member, but like when he, um, when he gets defeated, he actually has to um, go back and retreat rather than, like, you know, fully stop talking. So, yeah. Sometimes he can end up doing that multiple times in a single battle, but uh, that... Okay, that wasn't a exactly the finest of all showings. I guess I can talk to Ryuji here. Damn it. I'm running, I may have to start dipping into my SP items soon. We've actually got something kind of, uh, kind of tough coming up. I'll just add this. But for now, I'll make a save here. I do want to maybe head back to the Velvet Room, but before I do that, I want to show this. There's a slot for books here. Yuck. This is something that I only noticed, um, like, very recently. I don't think I found this the oh. first time I played Royal. I think this might be Royal only as well. Huh? Get protein! Yeah. Maybe Akihiko wrote that book. 
or at least the the person in Persona Q are uh, and in Persona 4 Arena, who is also named Akihiko Sanada, but is not the same person as the one from Persona 3. Oh hey, I can talk to Arna Morgana here too. Mm. Yeah, I guess after the uh, Disaster Shadow tutorial. Okay, I just want to check if there's any decent ways I can make Genbu right now. I don't strictly need Genbu for confidants yet, but it's a nice one to have, and it's also a pretty bulky persona for just general gameplay. Listen up, inmate. Oh, okay then, something new's happening here. We are introducing a new regimen to your rehabilitation in the form of challenge battles. Oh, this unlocks now! For these trials, we will permit the cognitions of your comrades to fight at your side. So, I guess canonically they don't actually get to enter the Velvet Room themselves. <laughs> Cry your tears of joy! Depending on your results in combat, you will receive some form of compensation for your efforts. Should you prove successful, there is no doubt that you will be rewarded and strengthened in body and mind. We've even prepared a special stage for you to undergo this part of your rehabilitation. A stage that I kind of wish was a, a stage in Smash Bros, but it's not. Take this opportunity to demonstrate the furthest reaches of the strength you've gained up to now. Should you wish to attempt this at once, we shall oblige you. So, I wasn't expecting to have to talk about challenge battles yet, but this is a new feature in Royal, and it's something that I have a lot of conflicted feelings on once we actually see what's in there. So you find foes with your current party and aim for a high score. It, I honestly think it's pretty cool, especially since like baton passes and higher damage gives you more uh, of a score multiplier, and there are also other like multipliers for each individual fight. And also, yeah, afterwards, like, any HP and SP you lost in the challenge battle will be returned. However, items consumed will not be returned, and you don't get a game over if you're defeated. I think the current challenge battle is a bit beyond us, though. I don't know Do if I'll actually something? be doing it, but if I choose a special battle... Yeah, recommended level 10. This is gonna utterly destroy us at this point. But yeah, the higher your score, the better the reward you get, and you'll get three potential rewards. You can only get each one once, though. You cannot do a hold-up or an all-out attack, so uh, it's all about baton passes and going for um, just big damage from individual party members. And if we press down... <laughs> Brutality Ho! I didn't know you said that. Uh, so yeah, we have a bonus for winning in 20 actions. Uh, Wind attacks are worth triple, and attacks by Arn are worth, uh, seven tuple? I know that six is sex tuple, but what's septuple? I don't know what that is, but, um, I mean, I suppose I could show this now, but we're gonna get wrecked really badly. We will also, though, have one of my favorite songs in the game. This song is called Prison Labor, and it is amazing. It has a very classic Shin Megami Tensei vibe to it, but like, honestly, this is how I describe this song. If I ever made my own Pokemon game, I would like the Elite Four battle theme to sound something like this. Let's 
Yeah, oh, not as the song was approaching its best part. But yeah, like, I knew I was gonna get wrecked there. Also, it seems like I was wrong. You do get fully healed when starting those, but like none of it carries over, of course. We're back to how we were before. Yeah, I'm not winning that right now. Do you need something? But maybe when I'm I'm at the end of the palace, I might come back and try and do that. Because if you do it anything above level 10, you're probably gonna make it look like a complete joke, and I really don't want to do that. So, when I said that I have very conflicted feelings on this challenge battles, this is the reason why. So we have this battle right here, and it goes all the way up to for level 80, so there are multiple tiers to this, that's, that's great, right? And hey look, we have another, and we have another battle, chain battle, it's uh, locked though, I guess we unlock that later in the story, right? And we've also got our uh, technical challenge, I guess we'd unlock that also later in the story. And survival. Trickster. And these, these ones are special, actually. Full Moon and Foggy Day. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be showing these off eventually, but, um, yeah. For now, I want to talk about this, so... <sighs> this is why I have issues with this. Every challenge battle other than this one, and its different levels, which are totally different battles, by the way, so, like, you do get a little bit of a taste of it, but every other challenge battle is DLC, paid DLC. I'm normally not against paid DLC in games, but what I don't like is when a game actually teases you with something and makes it look like it's unlockable by normal gameplay, and then actually says, oh, actually, no, it's paid DLC. That's why I don't like. The fact that, like, you have seven sets of battles here, and only one of them is in the game by default. Yeah, it's, uh, like, anyway, that that's just, like, that that's, that's gonna be my only complaint about DLC. Um, I will say that as of recording this, I now know that the, um, the new versions of, like, ports of this game that are gonna be released, uh, in October 2022, they are gonna come with all the DLC, and, yeah, you'll have access to all of those then. Uh, I should warn you, though, uh, the Royal DLC Personas are disgustingly broken, so don't use them if you want a challenge. Uh, let's go for yeah, fuse by result, let's see. Oh, I can get I can get Succubus as well as Genbu. Mandrake, Saki Mitama, Asen Incubus. I see. Hmm. A strong oh, I like that you have Rakunda. There aren't a lot of enemies that use electricity in this dungeon too. I think Agathion is like one of the only ones that does. I was wanting to wait until- Oh, you, you're only 13 experience away for, off from getting Sukunda. I'll level you up first before I get Genbu. Silky Arsene, Silky Incubus, Incubus Saki Mitama. I don't want to get rid of Saki Mitama though, because Saki Mitama's good for Arn. Yeah, there's no way for me to get Succubus without getting rid of something that I'd like for Gendo. What do you I have? A strong Dormina and Re You'd think Rebellion would be pretty good in this game. It's uh, it's okay, but yeah, it's not nearly as good as it was in Persona 3. Dormina's kinda nice though. Uh, but Succubus is unfortunately of the Moon Arcana, which is yet another Arcana that we never actually need the matching Arcana bonus for. So I think I'm gonna just go back in, get our Sen one level. I see. A strong persona indeed. Because I don't really need to pass anything down from uh, Incubus. So I can get then I can get double debuffs, and that might be useful. So I'm gonna, gonna go back and do this. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna actually uh, actually end this part there because I was originally wanting to go cover a little bit more, but then we got the uh, challenge battles unlocking. So I had to talk about that, and I had to talk about uh, red shadows and about that that puzzle and disaster shadows. We actually have done we've done quite a bit. You know, actually, while we're here... Oh, we're not allowed to go back down there. Didn't realise that. I, I, there was a, that was that red part of the map that wasn't finished, and... <sighs> map perfectionism. Now then. My sister would get really um, annoyed at the fact that there's a little bit of unexplored part of the map. Whenever she would play Age of Empires, she would always make sure to explore everywhere. 
and clear out all of the fog of war. Okay, let's just fight these things a bit until our sand levels up. You might have noticed Morgana said two weaklings there. Yeah, the navigator comments are a bit different if um if the enemies are weaker than you. Okay. Man, that was I think easy. one of my favorite quotes though, we won't be seeing it for a long time, but is the quote that you get for getting ambushed by by weak enemies past a certain point in the game. You get chewed out pretty badly for letting that happen, and it's hilarious. Oh, uh, hi, okay, um, give me money. Oh, okay then, okay, I guess I can show this. So, whenever you're negotiating with a persona that you had previously, no matter what option you say, you'll always have the option to recruit it back for free. Like, as in, without having to go through the original negotiation. And I'm gonna actually accept this, because I wouldn't mind having another bike horn. That one looks pretty gloomy, but... Oh, we have to still, we have to negotiate again? I thought you, you, you get it free, okay. Alright, so gloomy, vague, ride. How about this? Yeah, there we go. Generation gap. I suppose this would be vague, yeah. Ruminate f uh, on philosophy with gloomy uh, characters. Makes sense. Okay, well that wasn't what, what I was expecting to happen, but... Um, oh, right, I have to dump something now. I'll need to pay for Mandrake if I... Do I really need Kelpie right now? Honestly, I don't think I really need Kelpie at the moment. Not bad. Normally I like to keep higher level Personas because they usually fuse into higher level things, but Kelpie wasn't really making uh, anything decent in the Dollar Room. And there is Secunda. Awesome. Okay. And that's all I want. How much money do I have at the moment? Not a uh, huge amount of yen. I'm probably gonna have to There's fight that. Oh, what actually, no. I thought that shoot. in an episode where we mostly did Velvet Room, I could at least show this. I see. A strong ah, now that Arsene's learned more skills, we actually have two uh, skill slots for like inheritance. Let's go Secunda and... As much as I kind of like status, I'm going to do this because, as I said in Arsene's bio, Aha is a decent asset on Joker because nobody in the party is going to be able to use curse skills for a long time. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I am Arsene, the other you who exists within. Though I may disappear this moment, I shall always be at your side. We shall meet again, when your fate reaches its conclusion. <laughs> I just wanted to show that there is unique dialogue for fusing away our sin, and oh, I feel so bad for, for of all things, he's getting fused with Incubus. Ugh. That is not a good way to go, as a persona. But as he said, he's always with us. Every persona that we make is technically just us, so we'll always have him. And he made a not-so-subtle allusion to the fact that he, um, he's still destined to show up in that flash forward. Okay, we got Genbu now. Just want to quickly what see if there's anything else I can make. I can make waffles! You can't handle this. <laughs> but no, I can't handle waffle yet. For those who don't know, um, that's because in the answer, uh, when I guess summons that persona, the way that she says it sounds like Waffle, and I just could never, um, like that's always stuck with me. But yeah, okay, with that, we've done quite a bit. I'll see you all next time for actually something pretty eventful in the palace. See you all then.